So today we're going to talk about the new and improved rules you need to know to fly your UAV at night legally, whether you're flying recreationally or as a 107 pilot. So let's do it. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Always appreciate it. It's good to see you. So if this is your first time here, my name is Keith and this is Alien Drones. I do a lot of drone tech, photography, tips and tutorials and industry news. And if that is something that excites you as much as it does me, then you want to hit the subscribe button and notify bell. That way I'll let you know when there's new content that might be especially piquant to you. Piquant? Piquant? So let's get into it. So in December, we had a huge release. The remote ID rule dropped as a belated Christmas present to all us drone and RC pilots. I scrambled to do an overview on the nearly 500 page rule at the time and after the dust settled, surprisingly, I got most of it right. So if you haven't already, make sure you take a look at it because it's pretty thorough if I do say so myself. I'll put that link up here as well as in the description. In that review, I mentioned that there were a couple more things that were released at the same time. And in the interest of time, I'd follow up with different videos to address these. And so, staying true to my word, here we go. Specifically, the other items released were a couple of rule changes to 107.29 that some thought were a part of the remote ID rule because they released it at the same time, but indeed they are not. These rule changes are for flights over people and flights at night. So to keep this video shorter, I'm only going to discuss the night flight changes in this video. Uh, but I'm going to be talking with the FAA again to clarify the flights over people rule because, of course, that's our role. And once I do that, I'll be dropping a separate video covering that. So again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when it comes. So before we talk about the rules of flying at night, you might be asking yourself, why in the hell would anybody want to do that? I mean, it's dark out. What are you going to see, right? Well, in addition to the obvious commercial applications of photography at night for things like real estate or weddings, it's just plain sexy. If you haven't seen the world at night through the lens of a drone, well, you don't know what you're missing. If you're not sure how to do things like photography, video, long exposure, light trails, and even light painting, be sure to take a look at the video that I'll put up here as well. Uh, I'll walk through all this stuff, including some settings and samples. Uh, I was blown away the first time I did this. I'm guessing you will be as well. Okay, so now the question, can anyone now fly a drone at night? And the answer is, hell yeah. Now there's nothing restricting a 107 or recreational pilot from flying at night. You just have to comply with either 14 CFR 107.29 of the 107 or 49 USC 44809 for recreational. Now those are just the official rules uh, for 107 or recreational pilots, uh, so don't get too freaked out about the numbers. Uh, but I will put a link in the description for both of the rule sets because keep in mind to fly at night you need to follow these rules as well. Uh, just not the stuff I'm going to be talking about here. So if you're not sure how to classify yourself as a hobbyist or a recreational or 107, uh, take a peek at this video that I have up here because I interviewed the FAA on how to make that decision and it's an interesting one for sure, so make sure you take a peek at that. Uh, but in a nutshell, what the new 107.29 changes did was basically reduce the 107 night flight requirements so now they're closer to the recreational rules. So let's just take a look at the specifics, both 107 and hobbyists, and we'll kind of lump those together. So just to keep this clean, I will just kind of put these up here as a series of questions, and then I'll just answer them as we go along. And remember, both of these are going to apply towards a recreational or 107. And if there's a difference or something unique, I'll mention at the time. So first, is anti-collision lighting still required? And the answer is yes. The drone must have an anti-collision light that flashes and is visible for at least three statute miles. Now this flashing thing is new, uh, but that does make sense. Uh, it always kind of flashed anyway, but before you had the option of having a solid light. You no longer have that option. The RPIC does not have to independently verify the lighting effectiveness, but are responsible to ensure that the lighting is visible and operating properly. Uh, so that's really good. Everybody was worried initially that how are we going to verify that this thing can be seen from three statute miles. So they said, you're going to get a pass. The manufacturer says it, we, you can rely that that's okay. And of course, if you're wondering what anti-collision light I use, I did do a review on one. I'll drop that link up here as well and in the description. Uh, so you can go to that review and just uh, see what it is. So number two, what about the anti-collision lighting color? So 
The FAA decided not to define a specific color for the anti-collision lighting as depending upon the circumstances, different color lights may fit the situation better than others. And they specifically said, quote, while this rule does not require specific characteristics of the anti-collision lighting, remote pilots remain obligated before each operation to consider the environment in which they are operating, particularly in areas that are known to have regular agricultural operations at night. So number three, what about orientation lighting? What color do the lights have to be? Now remember, these are the position lights that are come on most UAVs already, the red and the green that are on the back and the sides. Uh, but surprisingly, the FAA just eliminated this as a requirement and stated, and I quote, while the orientation lighting may assist the RPIC in the visual line of sight requirements in 107.31, such as knowing the unmanned aircraft's location, altitude, attitude, direction of flight, uh, however, this rule does not require position lighting because it is not the only means by which a remote pilot could meet these requirements. So well, they're gone if you need them to be. That's cool. So four, is there now a test or waiver required to fly at night? So a bit of history first. Uh, previously to fly commercially at night, the 107, uh, it was kind of a pain uh, because you had to apply and receive a 107 waiver from the FAA had to create and administer testing to your crew, had to have a crew, uh, train the crew, have a crew at site and available. Uh, you had to have detailed procedure and process in writing on what your flight plan was, special ground lighting, area barriers, you get the drift. In short, it sucked, but it was possible. Uh, I did apply for and receive a daylight waiver, which will now become invalid on March 16th, 2021 and you'll no longer need to get any of those. Well, maybe I'll hang it up and put it on display as it'll be a collector's item now. So now 107 pilots will have to pass the initial 107 test that already covers night flight training. So if you haven't taken it yet, uh, after March, the new training should already have that uh, requirement in it. Uh, or you need to take a new recurrent training if you're already 107 certified and that will include the flight at night stuff. Uh, so this will all be available starting March 1st in 2021, as I mentioned. Recreational pilots do not need to take a test or training or anything to fly at night. So five, can you operate at night in a controlled airspace? The simple answer is mostly no. Uh, for both 107 and recreational, a Lance is not available for night flights in controlled airspace. Now for 107 pilots, you can still apply for an airspace waiver manually, but flights at night in controlled airspace for recreational pilots, just not an option. So six, do you need a visual observer to fly at night? Uh, previously for 107, this was a requirement. Now it's not required at all for 107 or recreational, and it's left up to the RPIC to determine if it's required for the operation or if it would make it safer. So seven, can anyone pilot a UAV at night? No. The FAA prohibits a person from manipulating the flight controls of a small UAS or acting as a remote pilot in command, an RPIC, or a visual observer if he or she knows or has reason to know that he or she has a physical or mental condition that would interfere with the safe operation of a small UAS. Well, that eliminates at least three of you that I know based on your comments. You know who you are. And lastly, this isn't really a rule, but a bonus tip, and that is when you're out in the dark flying, just be safe and of course, fly it like you stole it. You've heard me say that many times. Be keenly aware of your surroundings. It's not the same as daytime flight when you can't see things very far away. And you might consider wearing something bright. It's better to be seen. Like this. Oh yeah, now that's better. It always helps to be visible at night and you don't want to get run over by a truck or anything, of course. And did I mention that this cool swag is now available in the Alien Drone store? Yep, I might even offer a discount in the description for a while, but not to those three of you. You know who you are. So that is what you need to know for flying your UAV at night. Bam, easy peasy, right? I realize this is a quick overview. So of course, if you have questions or comments, as always, uh, please leave them below and I'll do my best to clarify them. Uh, also, I'll be talking with the FAA again, like I mentioned. So if you have anything you'd like me to clarify regarding like uh, remote ID, night flights, uh, flights over people, anything like that, leave it in the comments and I'll try to get an answer. Uh, sometimes I misstate things or I miss something. And of course, if that's the case, I apologize in advance. And if I do find something wrong, I'll drop a comment in the notes or in the description or in the comments somewhere down below uh, to try to correct it. So uh, don't beat me up over it. Uh, also, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. 
Uh, even if night flying isn't for you and you watch anyway, hey, that is awesome. So thank you. I truly do appreciate you. Uh, lastly, if you like the content on this channel or you learned something new or you, something you didn't know before, I would appreciate it if you would hit the like button and the share. It's free, I promise, and it does help the channel by letting YouTube know that this content is valuable to someone. And without that, you won't see any future content from this channel, so I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you didn't like this content, I really show your disappointment by not only hitting that dislike button once, but hit it twice. That'll really make a statement. And with that, thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate your time. And until next time, and next video, good morning.